hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Tuesday, March the 5th, 2019, after a, a very busy stretch of days where uh, my neck of the woods, eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England, uh, basically dealing with um, three weather systems in four days, and I needed a day off because my brain was like jello, so that's why I was not live streaming yesterday. I figured the day after um, the, one of the bigger snowfalls, what few uh, big snowfall, what few snowfalls we've had this year, uh, it was time to take a, a, a short sabbatical. So good to see everybody on board. And in the aftermath of all of this, of course, we've got this ridiculous cold that is covering the eastern part of the United States. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how long is it going to, it's going to last. The next two weather systems that are on the table, including one that is moving into the Pacific West right now, and we'll uh, sneak a peek at the uh, long range. One of the things I was pointed out to today by someone who um, messaged me on Facebook, and he sent me uh, visuals of all the long range, the long, long range models, and every one of them is in conflict with the other, which is <clears throat> which goes to the one of the big reasons why I don't look at this stuff on the long, long, long range because it's there's just. I can't get my head around it. I've always said that. So why don't we try to solve, resolve the short-term issue, which is to get this cold air out of the way, and uh, let's get started. So actually, the, the uh, much of the country, the actual the weather is quiet, with the exception of the West, where we have winter storm warnings and flood watches up and down through California as the next major storm comes inland. There are some scattered winter weather advisories as you move into the Rockies, a few winter storm warnings up in the western half of Colorado, and we have a couple of winter storm watches up in uh, northern Nebraska, southern South Dakota. The big uh, color on the map tonight is that, I guess that's a dark blue, uh, from uh, Texas, from, uh, south, uh, from southern Texas and eastern Texas, east across Louisiana, uh, the st two thirds of the state of Mississippi, all of Alabama, all of Georgia, and uh, much of uh, South Carolina and Southern North Carolina, Northern Florida. Freeze warnings are up. So uh, this is really, this air mass is actually making it, I think, further south than most of the wintertime air, air masses did. So a widespread hard freeze is going to occur across the south. And, and uh, now we're getting to the time of year that these areas where their springs tend to arrive a little early and some of the sensitive uh, plants are budding including a lot of the fruit trees uh, that I'm not uh, familiar with the timing of the of the blooming of the of the uh, of the peach trees in in Georgia but certainly a hard freeze this time of year is not a welcome thing and you've got those hard freezes into South Carolina as well we have a peppering of advisories and winter storm warnings up around the Great Lakes because we're get, we're getting uh, some lake effect that's been going on there tonight. That will uh, continue overnight and then start to diminish as we go through the day uh, tomorrow. The uh, surface map really is dominated by high pressure in the eastern part of the U.S. We do have a weak storm off the North Carolina coast, which, by the way, brought an inch and a half uh, to uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, one of my Patreon members and uh, he also frequents these videos, uh, Rick, and then he's got a number attached to it, RIC. I'm sorry if I, I, I can't recall the, 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 the numbers. But um, uh, he messaged me on Patreon today uh, with an inch and a half of snow in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is the first and probably only snowfall that they're going to see for this winter. It took uh, a while, uh, but it happened here in early March. But we've got a couple of other weak fronts one moving through the lakes, another one, the, the uh, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, the other one further north. These are really basically reinforcing surges of cold air that are moving into the eastern part of the United States and will be impacting my area. I can't wait for tomorrow where temperatures are going to be struggling just to get above the mid-20s. I mean, you, you, this is really January weather. And if you seasonally adjust it, in terms of the um, anomaly, this time of year we should be up at about I would say 47 or 48-ish, middle to upper 40s, 
and you're talking about highs that are going to be in the middle to upper 20, so that's 20 degrees below average. If you want to seasonally adjust that to the coldest period in January, you're talking about daytime highs for New York City not getting out of the teens, and that's something that really doesn't happen very often. Meanwhile, out in the west, there's your next storm system that is coming inland uh, into the west, uh, and uh, that is a powerhouse, as we've seen so many of these powerful storms. If you look on the satellite, uh, the satellite loop, we've got this tropical feed of moisture shooting up deep from the Pacific tropics, as, as has been the case with uh, all these storms. You can't see the rotation of the upper low, which is to the west uh, and off the screen. It's on the far, you can see the edge of it on the far left, but it will come into view. And this is all going to be pushing uh, eastward. We have another one of these situations. Remember, I always say how if, if um, weather systems, they may not necessarily be identical, but they do have a, a rhyming sense. Uh, and uh, once again, we're seeing a situation where we're going to have a weak low coming out of this once it moves over the Rockies. We're going to have a, a weak low, a lead low for the end of the week, and then a more important storm right behind it uh, a day and a half later. And that's the system that's going to be running up uh, to the Great Lakes. Uh, let me, let, let's go back, uh, speaking of which, let's go back to the system from Sunday into Sunday night. I was especially happy with this turnout because uh, I, I, I really nailed my forecast and I was very proud of that. It was a, it was, um, it, it, it's not often that you get <clears throat> the, the boundary of the top end and the bottom end and the higher parts uh, pretty much on target. You're never going to hit everything exactly correct. As a lot of folks are, are, are love to point out that you forecasted one inch for my area and I got an inch and a half. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is what I sometimes get uh, from folks. Or if I forecasted three to six, well, I got six point one. So you were you 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 were wrong. You know, I love that. But the bottom line is, this storm really produced as advertised, and the uh, the, the southern end of this was where you had a sharp cutoff. Once you went south of Route 195 in New Jersey, the snow area just basically shut down. And it's at a time of year, it's always tough in South Jersey to get it, to get it to snow. It gets particularly tough this time of year. We had borderline temperatures just about everywhere. The intensity of the precip uh, really knocked down uh, that uh, critical maybe half a degree in some places. Had some sleet that mixed in on Long Island, which held the amounts down. But the heavy snow set up literally the southern edge of the heavy snow boundary right along the North Shore, just uh, north of my house, uh, uh, pretty much. And uh, back to New York City, which got five inches. And by the way, the uh, three storms in, in four days, plus the fact that New York City had, had uh, reported uh, snow, trace or higher, five days in a row, that has only happened two other times. And I think if I, I only quickly looked at the graphic, but I think you have to go back sometime to the mid-1920s for the last time that that happened. It's only happened one other time other than that one. So uh, it was a rare event indeed, and it's considering how the winter has, ha, uh, has been that it comes out in March. Southern New England did especially well. Uh, and you move into eastern Connecticut and into Rhode Island. We had a couple of patches in Rhode Island and in a couple of areas just south of Boston that uh, had got 18-inch uh, amounts uh, based on the snowfall analysis from the Weather Service. And Boston got uh, at least 12 out of this. So uh, the biggest, really, the biggest snowstorm of the year and the one that probably impacted the I-95 corridor uh, from New York City to Boston, um, it, it really was the only one. If you want to go back to the November storm, okay. And but also, just like that, the snowfall, uh, uh, the snowfalls for the season in New York City are now, uh, if you use the total amount for the season, uh, if I, you know, the 30-year average is 25. The uh, long-term average is closer to 30. Uh, the city, New York City, is at 20, so uh, it's 10 below on the long term, five below on the short term. I think Boston now may be uh, pretty close to, you know, 
also maybe just running a little bit below normal. So those gaps were closed considerably by all the events that we had uh, Friday and over the weekend. It shows you how quick it could happen. Uh, we were actually would be one blockbuster snowfall away from taking snows to being uh, well above normal for the season. And, and usually when you look at the big years, it, it's because you've had at least one blockbuster uh, event. I don't think it's in the cards. Meanwhile, out in the West, been pretty busy with the snows in the last 72 hours across uh, western Colorado, even in and around Denver, picking up uh, four inches of snow. There hasn't been a whole lot of snow this year in eastern Colorado. And up the Sierra Nevadas, uh, very busy uh, with some 30 and 36 inch plus amounts uh, falling and they're getting more I've got they've gotten more uh, during today radar uh, quiet except uh, in the in the west where we've been getting rain all day coming into California it's actually diminished some from what this looked like earlier and snows as you go uh, north and east and toward Nevada and into Utah so uh, the way we're taking this going fo going forward is the fact that we've got two, again, there's two weak weather systems. And actually, there's the low that brought the snow to, to uh, uh, parts of coastal North Carolina today is well offshore and moving out. Uh, the Everywhere east of the Rockies is just pretty much, well, not quite everywhere, but most areas east of the Rockies just basically um, overwhelmed with cold air, temperatures averaging well below normal. And of course, you could see that energy in the west that has moved inland. Part of it runs out to the east, and that's this weak little system that's coming through for Friday into Friday night. When we look at the upper air, you'll see there's not a whole lot of support for this. This is a very, very, this is a relatively weak system. It should go out, and then uh, the main energy comes out with this low on uh, Friday night in eastern Colorado that goes through the central plains, and at least in the world of the GFS, it intensifies this into a pretty strong storm, bringing big snows to a, a good chunk of Nebraska, south and North Dakota, and on up uh, into Minnesota. Looks like this low is going to go west of uh, the state of Wisconsin, and they're gonna get into some rain here, and maybe even get some thunderstorms uh, to come up uh, with the cold front that's sweeping through. And we, by the way, we may wind up with another you know, severe weather event down the road with this, if it winds up being as deep as the GFS and a couple of the other models advertise. Here in the east, uh, we're gonna, going to pretty much lose all this cold air with low tracking the way it is. The one thing I would be careful of is uh, whether there, that, whether there might be a st at the start uh, in uh, the eastern part of New York State and in New England with, uh, with as this moves uh, eastward, and northeastward that we could see some sleet and freezing rain at the start and maybe a little bit of snow in northern New England at the start as well. By the way, another spot, northern Maine, uh, just snow records are just falling apart there one by one. Uh, snowiest winters on record for places like Caribou, for example. And northern Maine's really just been in an absolute bonanza when it comes to snow uh, this winter, whereas coastal Maine has been in, in a sad state of neglect for the most part up until this particular event. Uh, so Portland, Maine actually picked up uh, a bit of snow out of this. I'm sipping on a hot chocolate because of how cold it is. All right, so this Great Lakes low then moves out. There's a little cold air behind it, but not much. And you've got more energy coming into the west, into the southwest this time uh, for early next week. And guess what? back to the toward the Western Great Lakes, you're gonna take another low. So this is where the pattern is going now. It, it, it's going into what looks, would be typical of uh, mid-March, where you start to see lows. With the absence of any blocking pattern, you're going to see lows cut, cut, cut to the lakes. And in the east, you're gonna wind up with shots of cold air as each cold front comes by, and then you warm up and, and you wind up raining. So I, I, it's kind of hard to envision how we're going to get another snow event uh, over the next 10 days out of this. Uh, I won't speculate much beyond that, but uh, I'm thinking that uh, at, least, at least for the next 10 days after whatever happens Friday, which looks really minor, uh, we, uh, 
we, we, we may have to just either <clears throat> hang it up for the season or you'll have to sit and hope for the absolute perfect setup in the upper atmosphere. So on we go to the upper air and uh, here's the uh, trough that's swinging through the east right now. So you've got this really cold push of air in the east. That trough is going to start to lift out as we go into Friday. Now, it's you can barely find the shortwave trough. It's barely visible here uh, until we get to Friday night when it's uh, moving off the coast. And that is telling you, when you again, the relative flatness of the flow is, uh, is telling you that uh, this system is not going to be able to do very much. It'll just get kicked along, and then you start to focus on the deep trough that is out in the, in the western half of the United States and the big ridge that is in the east. And you can see that lifts right up to the lakes. Then you get your front to come through, uh, and what happens? That moves out. The next ridge comes in, next deep trough out in the west. It's a very progressive pattern, one weather system after another after another. And uh, toward the end of the forecast period, the model tries to... Uh, show a, a little ridging out in the west and troughing in the east but I don't know how much you're going to be able to do with this because at the end of the day there really isn't a whole lot there's no blocking to speak of so it, it, the trough can't really hold in and it's just going to, going to wind up pulling out giving way to the next uh, ridge building up into the east so it, it's a it's a bit more of a spring look early spring looking pattern once we get out of the uh, uh, the end of this week and uh, into uh, in, into the weekend, uh, I'm going to come back to the board right now. Hang on one second. I think I'm going to probably go a little shorter than uh, than what I usually do with these live streams, if only because of the fact that uh, it is a uh, there's not there's not a whole lot of weather going on, and I'm still trying to get my brain back together. But I'm on the chat board right now. Uh, I almost froze to death. Uh, uh, you, you almost froze to death mowing, uh, moving snow, and it's time for the cherry blossom, says 911 Ryan. It was cold out there this morning, but the one thing I will say is that uh, you know the the, uh, the, the rising uh, sun angle and the brightness and the strength of the March sun, at the very least, unless there's a you know it, it, it's overtaken by a screaming wind, it does take uh, much of the sting. Uh, out of the cold air uh, this time of year, and that 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 is uh, that's a positive for sure. There's something wrong in the southeast. Crazy tornadoes. It's the Arctic hole. Well, Daniel Seaman, it is definitely the fact that we have an unusually cold uh, Canadian air mass uh, that uh, moved on that moved into the United States, and in response with that big st that, that storm system from over the weekend, you had a really huge pressure gradient temperatures well below zero up in the Dakotas temperatures in the 60s and 70s and higher as you went down through the southeast in Florida you had a almost perfect setup for severe weather even the storm I mean, the storm prediction center had an enhanced an enhanced risk of, of severe weather over the area that um, that got the tornado so Paul Roman uh, just just what I just said you know you have this is a time of year where you can have an 80 or 90 degree spread in temperatures from the areas up to the north and the areas down to the south. And that's a big temperature gradient uh, to work with. And the atmosphere doesn't like that. That's, that, that has to be uh, released somehow. And in this particular in, in, instance, uh, you had that, you had really strong dynamics a, a strong inflow of Gulf moisture into the southeast, and it, it, the atmosphere just went nuts on it. Uh, you know, you you got a cold front coming down that has temperatures behind it in the 20s and teens this time of year. You're going to have a very violent reaction somewhere, and that's that's exactly how it played out. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> uh, East Pacific Oscillation, which we talk about when we talk about these teleconnections, has been very strongly negative and I have you know said many times that of all those signals that you look at when we look at the teleconnections that uh, East Pacific oscillation to me is the one that's the most important of the bunch when that is negative 
that's cold air. When it's strongly negative this time of year, compared to the time of year, that is really cold air. All right. When I, you know, when we like as I said earlier with the seasonal adjustment, <clears throat> when you're 20 degrees below normal in January in New York City, your high is about 18. Uh, in, here we are in March, it gets to about you know 30 or 31 or 29, 30, 31. That's a big departure. But in January, you you won't ha you don't have uh, you don't have 80 degree re readings working on the other side of the equation uh, uh, down in the South and across Florida and you don't, at least uh, with respect to uh, that kind of inflow during the, during the month of January, uh, you just didn't have it in terms of that big uh, temperature gradient that sets up uh, like it does in March. And, and the atmosphere just does not like it at all. Hey, Izzy D, are you still on? I'm just kind of curious. I meant to ask you how much snow you got on Saturday because I know northern Monmouth County, uh, some spots picked up a few inches especially as you go wet, you know, more to the west. But I'd be curious as to uh, what you got. Uh, they're already informing North Texas and South Oklahoma uh, of, well, they wouldn't say tornado warnings, okay? They don't put up tornado warnings three days in advance. But let's take, uh, let's see what the Storm Prediction Center has to say uh, in its long range. So hang on one second. <clears throat> uh, nope, that's not what I want. Let's bring up the severe uh, storm prediction center. There's no severe weather. Actually, they have on their Saturday, this is unusual, on day five, they have a 15%. I want to just get it stuck there on day five. Let me show you here. So look for, this is going to be important. When, when they... Whenever SPC, whenever the Storm Prediction Center does this, pay attention. Uh, when they go, <clears throat> usually in their four to eight day time frame, they'll tell you that either the predictability is too low, or if they're really sure that there's no threat of severe weather, they just will say there's no threat of severe weather. But when they stick up a 15% chance this early uh, for this large area, uh, you're looking at that whole area being at a slight risk for severe weather. So uh, that that is a that's a that is a very strong statement from the Storm Prediction Center regarding uh, this weekend. Uh, so pay attention to that if you're living if you live in that area. Uh, that is uh, this has the potential for being another uh, serious uh, severe weather outbreak uh, going into with with that storm system heading uh, for the Great Lakes. Uh, 4.5 in Poland, Maine for the last event, 74.2 for the season, Joseph Tefano. That is insane. Now, I've had last year on Long Island, in central Long Island, I had 75 inches for, for the season. So I kind of know what that's like. Frank uh, Toko, NWS recorded 90 inches of snowfall in Erie, Pennsylvania this winter with 101 being normal. I say close enough to bring on spring. Yeah, that works for me. <laughs> Boston had 2.3 inches three weeks ago, now close to average with 26.5. Thank you, Scott Briller. That is correct. Those three storms, I waited till the, the beginning of March to do it, but those three systems uh, brought the snowfall numbers up uh, a little higher. There's Rick8013. He had it first uh, inch and a half. I mentioned it earlier in the live stream, Rick, uh, about your inch and a half of snow down in uh, southeastern North Carolina. Uh, you were left out uh, up until now, uh, but um it, it you, you are you are now um you are now uh participate have participated in the winter of 2018 uh 2019 uh no adam z i'm not going to show you what the summer forecast as i have said many times and someone mentioned it to me that you know that there's something out and people are already you know they're talking about i'm not doing it uh you know it's been proven over and over again particularly with these winter forecasts how truly uh, they don't really have a whole lot of value. And the, at least with the wintertime forecast, they're kind of really used to drive uh, people's websites and everything else, and I'm just not going to do it. So, you know, it, the, we're, 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 we go out 10 days to two weeks, maybe a little bit longer, but not much longer than that. I'll leave the seasonal forecasts up uh, for the po folks that uh, really get into it. It is just... Uh, it is just not 
something that I, I, I really uh, want to spend any 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 time on. Uh, Dio Nankumar, is this the last snowstorm, or we have uh, we'll have more? I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we're probably done. Uh, I, I, it, if, if, um, if the pattern makes a, a magical positive appearance one more time between now and the end of the month, I, I won't say it's it, that it that it that it can't happen. The only thing I will say is that after you get past March fifteenth, you really have to have things line up just perfectly uh, in 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 the atmosphere. It, it can't you you you. you uh, you got to have everything right. Last year with the third and fourth nor'easter for much of the area, you had everything right. And if we had some kind of blocking, if we had even a hint of blocking coming down uh, along the pike, I would say uh, you have a shot. But I, I don't see it. I really don't see any hint of any real blocking as we uh, as we go down um, as we go down the road. So it, it, we may we may very well be done. Uh, I'll be proven wrong, <laughs> as it's all as I as, as has been known to happen. Uh, I, I I don't say anything unequivocally one way or the other because uh, in a few times I learned pretty quick that when when you do that you really set yourself up for doom and failure. So I am leaving a door open, but again it would have to be an absolutely perfect setup uh, for something to happen. Uh, Shelly Man Studios, you did get way more than me. You got at least six in Bridgeport, and it was you know eight and ten just just uh, inland. Uh, Johnny Quest, uh, you've got uh, uh, you've got rain issues coming with this system for the weekend, so just bear that in mind. You're actually going to get a little bit of precip uh, come uh, Thursday night into Friday, I think, with that lead system as it as it moves to the east. Uh, just want to check out these low temperatures tonight. Let's bring up the, the, the map again because uh, it's going to get really cold. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the numbers all that well, but we've got single digits all over the place in upstate New York and in New England, uh, teens to around 20. And as we run down to the south, you've got 20s all the way down in almost right into into northern Florida. They got their, They have the number 30 print over there, uh, but you've got, uh, you could certainly see some upper 20s there in the Florida Panhandle, 20s in all of Georgia, low 20s and even some teens showing up in, in western North Carolina, northernmost Georgia, and through Tennessee uh, and Kentucky. So, I mean, this is really cold. Even down uh, into uh, New Orleans, down to 37, you've got temperatures down in the 20s and low 30s, all the way down into southern Louisiana, and right down through much of the coastal bend of Texas, although it doesn't quite go all the way down as you head down toward Corpus Christi and Brownsville. But this time, you know, upper 30s and low 40s down here, that's, that's really cold. This is a very, very cold-looking uh, map uh, for, the, uh, for the 5th of March. And we'll probably do it one more time Wednesday night and Thursday morning before we start to finally see these temperatures begin uh, to moderate. So uh, let me bring you back to the chat here really fast. Uh, Paul Roman, you're going down to 11 tonight. Uh, uh, Gloria Rangot, uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, none of the unshoveled parts where you toss the high quality melt has been able to melt as yet. I gotta have to tell you, I you know I hand shoveled everything. I had about three and a half inches in my house. Uh, it weighed like about eight. The water content was was uh, it was it, crazy with this. I had a uh, a change over to sleet about halfway through the event, and then it went back to snow toward the end. But I, with compression and everything else, it, it it boiled down to about three and a half inches. But that stuff weighed. If if it had been a full ten to one ratio, I would have gotten what they got in, in uh, just inland in southern Connecticut, where you started to get into those um, eight inch plus amounts. Central Park, uh, Scott Briller pointing out that with, and this is in New York City, ties the eighty nine ninety as the only two winters with the biggest snow in November and March. Uh, and still no winter has had six inch snows in both months maybe next year that's correct we were looking at seeing a winter where your six inch plus snowfalls you had one in November and one in March uh, you've had either or but you've never had both uh, we were close to getting both we had six in November five uh, in the system uh, for um, that happened on Sunday so it just missed 
uh, doing that, but still uh, a very unusual statistic. And the fact that we had uh, f five, uh, those five days in a row, uh, the, uh, I'm just reading Steve LaPointe, I'm reading your, um, Joe Bastardi claims the NAO goes positive, and at, which it does, it's very strongly positive. And after a warm up, the last two weeks of March will be very cold with snow chances. You know, I know what they're, you know, he's looking, you know, he's looking at the, 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 the Pacific North America index going positive and the Eastern Pacific oscillations going negative again. You know what, take me there. I'll deal with it when I get there. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to uh, try to even uh, be a hero and pick, tell you what, that you're going to have a perfect setup for snow at the end of March uh, from this time frame. Uh, too far out for me, and I'm not doing it. Uh, but it's an interesting <clears throat> opinion nonetheless. Uh, Oki AG, 19 last night, 22 tonight, 30 today, 45 tomorrow, then 50s Thursday, and 70 on Friday. Talk about March volatility. That is volatility uh, in a big way. Canadian model was a fail this winter in the storm. We had the GFS, Euro, uh, and NAM. Uh, I have to tell you, though, this weekend on... Um, the Friday night, Saturday event for my area, anyway, the HRRR was superb. Uh, and then on Sunday night, the HRRR was superbly bad, right along the coast, at least. It was very, it, it really, uh, it had it, it had mostly snow all the way down into southern New Jersey, not even close. Uh, it uh, really failed in bringing up that rain, uh, that rain sleet line, which got just to about New York City, by the way, and uh, cut Long Island in half. Uh, from east to west so uh, you know the HRRR did not do well the NAM uh, the, didn't do well on Friday night into Saturday it was too warm but it did much better on the Sunday night Monday morning event uh, with, uh, with regards to the, uh, the warm air getting up, uh, up almost to about uh, New York City and into central Long Island so it, you know it, it's a uh, it's kind of crazy where you had two very similar events, excuse me, two relatively similar events, and the uh, and, and the models uh, only could handle one or the other, uh, but not both. Uh, they all had their flaws. It became a very big guessing game. And one of the frustrating things is that when you get into the short, short, when you're in the super short range, uh, and you're down to really now casting. You, you shouldn't be seeing huge diff model differences in the in, in the short in the very very short range, and that uh, has happened so many times this winter. Which then you wind up sitting around guessing, second guessing yourself to an entire event, and and, and you know which one do you go with uh, if, if you're going to go with anything, and, and that's why it's more important. It, it's absolutely the most important thing to do is to look at the actual weather that's going on and not. Uh, necessarily uh, over relying on the, on the guidance. Use the guidance to massage your forecast and not necessarily to be your forecast. The parallel GFS, Steve LaPointe, is um, yeah, it's not going to be operational because they got too many problems with it and uh, they are going to address that, but I think that's going to take uh, quite a while. And by the way, the European uh, was not good with either event. Uh, as far as uh, de the uh, depiction of snow and frozen precipitation, it just it never really caught on until the very last minute, uh, and and even then when it did, I I, uh, I didn't even look at the European over the weekend. I, I just I just decided to discard it because I just I just couldn't uh, I I really didn't see any point. Uh, Alaska Railroad record breaking snow here in the mid in mid Midwestern Wisconsin in February. I'm 48. I've never seen this much snow in one month, let alone a full season. Many cities in Wisconsin, all-time records for the month of February. And I talked to someone earlier today uh, who says that, that uh, I mean, he literally has three and a half feet of snow uh, on the ground where he is. I mean, it's been an incredible run. And I can remember getting questions back <clears throat> in late December, early January. And there's a comment lurking somewhere on one of my videos uh, from someone, you know, basically throwing in the towel on winter. I mean, think about this. Throwing in the towel on winter in Wisconsin in, in the uh, uh, early part of January. I just could not, it was mind-boggling to me. And of course, 
that was the ultimate contrary indicator because it was shortly after that that we saw the pattern you know really go uh, uh, start to go gangbusters for that particular part of the uh, of the country all right folks going to call it a night at this point let me just suggest to you uh, a, a, a couple of things if you don't mind but uh, for those of you who uh, would like a complete what i've described as a complete weather experience you can jump on my weather platform on patreon uh, it's just two dollars a month and you get extra live streams extra posts and uh, you can message me at any time so uh, there's the link to that uh, if uh, you haven't done so already particularly if you are in the new york new jersey long island connecticut lower hudson valley area you can download my weather app for free on Google Play or on the App Store. And there is a link to help you uh, get there and uh, do that. You can also, uh, if you'd like, if you shop on Amazon, uh, you can use the uh, what I call the Joe Stradamus link uh, to Amazon. And here's the link there. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're going to shop on Amazon, you go on that link and just search for your stuff. Uh, we are a participant in the Amazon Services LLC Associates Program, which is an affiliate advertising program designed to provide a means for us to earn fees by linking to Amazon.com, excuse me, and its affiliated sites. Uh, and uh, you get your stuff, and Amazon throws me uh, a few cigars along the way. Thanks for those of you, by the way, who have hit Super Chat in the last couple of weeks. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to have the Joe and Joe uh, weather show tonight on my Facebook page, meteorologist Joe Chaffee at 9.15. Patty Durkle, new Patreon member. Nice to see you on board. Uh, we're just wrapping up, so you'll have to watch it on the replay, Patty. Uh, but uh, it's all there for you. And uh, again, Joe and Joe show tonight on Facebook at uh, roughly 9.25 Eastern Time. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, be safe, and if we don't see you later, we shall see you tomorrow.